Good morning. We're going to take a look today at the rest of our article looking at um, why are your clothes so cheap. We've looked a little at text structure so far, the different patterns that authors use to organize their information when they're writing nonfiction. We looked at problem solution, cause and effect, chronological, narrative description, um, and compare and contrast. Today we're going to finish our article and then you're going to have the opportunity to practice some of your text structure skills or identification. So we left off um, at angry and inspired, which takes us back to Calpona at the moment when the factory erupted into flames. There had never been a fire drill at the factory. The only exit door on her floor was locked, so workers couldn't leave during the day, and piles of cardboard boxes blocked the path to that door. Calpona's supervisor managed to clear away the boxes and get the door open. Frantic workers stampeded toward the narrow stairway. Fortunately, everyone, including Calpona, escaped unscathed. After the fire, Calpona had no choice but to return to work. But something happened to her. As she sat at her sewing machine day after day, earning her meager wage, she became angry and inspired. She began attending classes at a local nonprofit organization, where she learned that the factory owners were breaking the law. She tried to organize her fellow workers into a union. As a group, they could bargain with the factory owners. If the owners refused to treat them fairly, they could strike. For her efforts, Calpona was fired, yet she only became more determined to change the lives of garment workers in Bangladesh. So here I'm thinking is a cause and effect. The cause is that Calpona tried to create a union, she wanted them to strike, and the effect was that she was fired. Today, she is 39 years old. Like the courageous American workers from the 1920s and 30s who crusaded or fought for safer factories and fair wages, Kaupona had decided or dedicated her life to workers' rights. She co-founded the Bangladesh Center for Worker Solidarity. Now she's one of her country's most celebrated labor activists. Pro progress has been slow, though. And 2013, the deadliest disaster in the history of the garment industry happened in Dhaka, not far from where Kalpona once worked. More than 1,100 workers were killed and 1,000 more injured when the Rana Plaza fa factory building collapsed. In the rubble were clothes with familiar labels, Joe Fresh and Benetton. Slowly changing. The disaster at the Rana Plaza was devastating to Calpona, but the tragedy has also become an important turning point in the struggle for workers' rights. Last June, 41 people were charged with murder in connection to the Rana Plaza disaster. Several large Western realtors, including American Eagle, H&M, and Adidas, have vowed to do a better job enforcing rules about working conditions and fair wages at the factories that make their clothing. More American shoppers are asking difficult questions about where our clothing is made and how our insatiable hunger for cheap apparel has contributed to global human rights abuses. Calpona is now traveling the world speaking out against abuse and petitioning, petitioning big name brands to do more to protect the people who make our clothes. As she works tirelessly to help others, she often thinks back to her teenage self peering down at her school from the factory roof wishing for a different kind of life. All these young women and girls are working every day, giving their lives for pieces of clothing, she says. We owe it to them and all of us to fight until we win. Now I'm going to read the sidebars because there are a couple of sidebars. The first one is Nike, a model of success, and I kind of introduced that during the 90s, Nike was a big violator of human rights in their factories, particularly child labor. So Nike, a model of success. In the 1990s, Nike came under fire for the rock-bottom wages, abusive conditions, and use of child labor in its overseas factories. Sales plummeted as angry customers held protests and boycotts. 
which means they weren't buying their um, apparel or shoes. If Nike wanted to stay in business, it had to make big changes, and it did. Today, Nike has a team that monitors conditions in its factories. Inspection reports are made public online. Nike was also one of the first companies to publish the names and addresses of every overseas factory that makes its products. Now the company is praised for its transparency, or for what is known as corporate social responsibility. Nike could be a model for other brands looking to address labor issues in their supply chains. And our last subject, is, or excuse me, sidebar, is what could you do? Four ways to help Calpona in her crusade to improve the lives of garment workers. Trying to solve the problems faced by garment workers around the world can feel daunting or really hard to figure out. What could you possibly do? Turns out you have a lot more power than you think. Here's what to do. Research where your clothes are made and which companies are committed to finding and stopping abuses in their supply chains and support them. Talk to your friends and families about what you find out. Write letters to companies that make your favorite brands. Tell them you expect that people who make your clothes to be treated fairly and paid well, they will listen. You are their customer and they want to keep your business. Three, you don't need to stop buying all clothing made in places like Bangladesh. Bangladesh is one of the poorest countries in the world and the garment industry creates 4.2 million desperately needed jobs there. These jobs, however brutal, mean the difference between life and starvation for many people. If everyone boycotted clothing made in Bangladesh, the garment industry might leave and workers would lose their jobs. Number four, spread the word that as global citizens, we expect every human being, whether stitching a hat in Honduras or hemming a pair of jeans in Vietnam, to be treated with dignity and respect. You're now gonna go under classwork and you're going to answer a couple of questions. You're gonna look at what is the text structure in the sidebar Nike, a model of success. So you would give your answer. And of course you can look at the attached text structure cheat sheet on Google Classroom. And then explain why you think it's that text structure with evidence. Then what is the text structure of the last two paragraphs of the section, how did this happen on page nine? So you need to go to page nine, make sure you're under how did this happen. I think that it, if we look at Nike here, and then on page nine, how did this happen actually starts to take place on page eight, but you're gonna go over to page nine, and you're gonna look at the last two paragraphs here on page nine next to Nike a model success, and tell me the text structure of these two paragraphs. Have fun.